the kind of protest that the Indian people have been having for the last 400 years is non-participation in anything that they don't believe in. And to try and get them to participate in um, the usual manner, using uh, usual organizational procedures and that that's been proven in other places just doesn't seem to work because we've had some experience up here with that. There's no such thing as usual patterns. Every pattern is, is just cut to fit the particular uh, situation you've got. There are certain common things, and these are the things that I'm looking for, the common denominator. One thing being that people must want something. And if they don't want it, then you induce the appetite for it. You can't very well want strawberry shortcake if you've never eaten strawberry shortcake, you know. You at least get the flavor and the taste around. And also you start uh, pointing out that other people have so much strawberry shortcake that they throw out half, but you, you don't even have any. You know? I mean, you start agitating. That's what's meant by it. But uh, so far, I'm trying to find out what you want. Well, when you give me this this business autonomy, of, uh, I suppose. Autonomy in which way? In uh, determining their own life. Haven't you got it? No, we don't. Where don't you have it? Well, because uh, we happen to have in Canada something called an Indian Act. No. And that Indian Act uh, uh, determines the kind of uh, roles that we play in Canadian society. And that, ha that Indian Act wasn't produced by Indians, but was produced by white people for Indians. Now, under the assumption that Indians were a dying race and that uh, sooner or later there would be no more Indians, so as a protection to them, they, they developed this act. But now we have a situation in Canada where Indians per capita are the fastest growing group of people in Canada. And the Indian Act now is meaningless uh, to them uh, in terms of what uh, our own future has for, for us as a people in Canada. And the kind of role that we wish to play in Canada as being determined by something that was produced a hundred years ago. And so if you ask what the Indian wants, he wants a change in the Indian Act. But the usual methods that, that, they, uh, that are used to get things changed... Do Indians generally on a reserve know what the Indian Act does? Well, uh, let's say they, they know what effect the Indian Act has on their lives, but they don't, in generally, know all the, the language of the Indian Act. And they know the effect? Why, sure, because they live uh, under the effects of the Indian Act. It, it affects their whole lives. The Indian agent is not much different than the uh, warden in a prison. The Indian agent runs and controls their lives on the Indian reservation, and he is uh, given his... Um, rules of conduct by a bureaucracy called Indian Affairs, who get their rules of conduct from uh, legislation called the Indian Act. Now, it takes the Canadian people to change an act in Parliament because we have no Indians in Parliament. It's all white people in Parliament. So we have to convince white people to do things for us, and this is where we get balled up. It is very difficult to convince the white people to make these changes. Well, it's very difficult to convince anybody. As a matter of fact, I don't know historically <laughs> when any p people have done that. You're asking us to go do something for you. Why the hell should we? You want it bad enough? Why don't you go organize and go fight for yourself? Then you want to come along and ask us to help you. That's another situation. But while you're sitting on your on your creative rear end over there fishing and expecting us to go ahead and carry the ball for you, that this just doesn't add up. Well, I, I what you're you saying is that interpreted what I said. But I you know what I mean. You know what I mean. With all the difficulties that you're having, from what you've described as the political pattern there, you've got to set the you've got to set the model yourself first. All that I'm asking is it asking too much is that if this means so much to the people on the reserves, why don't they organize at least around that one issue and start a campaign on that to repeal repeal that act. Now, once you've got that in motion, then you come to the next stage of where you come to all these white liberal groups and the others and say, support us on this. Then you go, you go into newspapers and say this. But until, this is a point that I was trying to make before, until you have gone off in a leadership 
I don't mean you personally, I mean the, the, the Indian well, people. Don't you see that when the Indian people do this, when they go off on this thing, no. then they then they are, are automatically opted in to the very things that they don't want to get opted into. In other words, once you take on the trappings of the white man, you become a white man, and they want to retain themselves as Indians, but have the uh, opportunity to be mobile within the, the country in which is their birthplace. You're, you're telling me you, you don't want to get down into the white gutter because you might get some of the crap on you. Right. Well, you're going to have to. Well, you know, you're not going to sit off there in a, in, a, in a little, in a cocoon, more or less, and say, well, these terrible things are being done by these people to us in an Indian act and so forth. Uh, we're not going to go out. In order for us to go out to... Uh, to change this in the act. That means that we've got to go out into this world and we've got to go out in the politicking and we've got to go out here and all this thing. And this means that we're going to get the white man's uh, uh, kind of way of life. Some of it's going to stick around on us because first we've got to learn how to, t how to talk to them and that means that we've got to learn to talk in those values as well. And we don't want to do that. That's going to corrupt us. So we want to stay here and we want to have those white people over there, wherever they may be, they should go fight for us. That's no, what you're saying. Should, when you're home on a reserve and you don't, and you don't have uh, all, all of the um, uh, problems and everything that you have out in the white man's society, no. you feel sort of in a sanctuary. You want to, to remain uh, oh, with, with uh, that sanctuary, but at the same time you want to be a part and parcel of everything that's happening in the world. And we say uh, that there must be some way, some alternative to us becoming what the white man is, you know, in, to come in and live with him. Uh, in other words, it's not a one-way street, which you're asking the Indian to become, to go down a one-way street, get opted into the system, and then he'll change it and he'll do things that he wants. But what we're saying is that it's a two-way street and that th these guys are going to have to come our way a little bit. We'll come our uh, half, and here we well, have well, equality, you know? Well, uh, well they'll come the other half of the way. They're not, uh, not uh, white people aren't interested in getting on a, going to live on a reserve or any of that stuff. You know that. Well, would you Most live on a reserve as you see the reserves now? I wouldn't live on any reserve, a Caucasian reserve, a Jewish reserve, or anything well, else. But, uh, but that's the way I'm constituted. Well, this is, you, you see, the point we're getting at is that these people, have a choice. There is no fence around the reserve. There is no uh, physical barriers in the reserve. They, all these things, they can walk out of the reserve any uh -huh. damn time they uh -huh. want, any day. But for some reason they don't. They live there and stay there. Are they stupid? Are they lazy? Or are no, I don't think... I well, don't, then this is the point, you see. They they've must been excited. I don't think they've been... Uh, I think the reserve becomes sort of a warm, it becomes sort of a sanctuary. But the cost is too high, you see. Uh, it costs too much for what the white man has to offer the Indian uh, in terms of his own personal freedom. The price is too high. And what the Indian is saying a lot of times is lower the price and we'll accept. You're saying that uh, people, is, uh, people have to come out of this. There's no choice. Uh, people have to take the crap of What's there? Uh, Very bluntly, I think that the world has changed and is changing by the minute that there is no place left to hide. You've got to be a part of the world. Yeah, but can you not change this part of the world? Do you have to? Is this well, there, uh, is there no alternative whatsoever? Oh, you can, you, can, you can go out and change it, but you can't change it long distance. You've got to get into it if you're going to make any changes. And this is this is where, if I if I seemed a little sharp with you, this is where I uh, I reacted with a little emotion because it's it's so virtuous to stand back and say, we don't want to change it. This world stinks and so forth and so on, and uh, we don't want to get involved there because we might smell too. Sure, you're going to smell, but you've got to get over there to uh, if you if you're go going to make any changes on it. And furthermore, you got to get over there to change if it's possible to make the changes over there in order to save what you want to save because you're not going to save it by remaining in solitary confinement. Well, that's all right. That isn't corruption. Well, uh, not, in, not in terms of what we, what we are as a consumer-oriented people, always. We weren't a producer 
people. We didn't produce houses and cars and highways and all sorts of things. Well, in the past, you see, the, the society wasn't compatible at all to what the Indian believed in. Today, it's becoming more compatible because we have things like uh, guaranteed annual income. We have uh, Medicare. We have uh, uh, old age pension, all sorts of ideas, you know, that are, uh, that, that are traditional the with the Indian people. Indian people always had Medicare, and they always had old age pension, and they always had guaranteed annual income for the uh, people. So uh, democracy is another uh, Indian idea. You know, white men didn't have it till he got here. Well, uh, in other words, you're buying all of our virtues, but none of our vices. Right. And we hope that, that your virtues uh, multiply and your vices become less. And I think that there is a place for Indian people to... Well, is this together. always necessary, though? It is necessary. You, can't, you, cannot have, you cannot get change done without power, and power always carries within it, uh, like everything else, an opposite side. Certain negatives on it. Even the simple thing that as, as we prolong life, we create problems of overpopulation. Uh, things that seemingly are resolutions of ideal problems always carry within their wake another problem. You can't avoid the negatives in life. And you're looking for just the positive. Well, and if you choose to avoid the negatives, you're just not going to get any of the positive. You, you say you don't want to get into the white man's political gutter. You're going to have this in DNA. Well, then what, what good is it then for us to uh, take power for ourselves if it's only going to uh, corrupt us? If, if we're going to be... Go corrupted like the people who have the power today, then I, for one, don't want that you're kind not, of power. You're not going to be corrupted. Well, do people... You're not going to be uh, corrupted. You're going to be alive. Uh, you know what you're saying? You're saying, what's the point of your being born since you're going to die someday anyway? I think I'm... Literally. I'm, I'm saying... Every, everything goes together that way. Don't you realize that if you had a world in which there was no sin and no evil, you wouldn't even have the, the words virtue and good. They'd be utterly meaningless. This is part and parcel of what life is. I don't think you've got what you think you've got. I really don't think you've got it. I think the things that you want to get, the so-called positives, you take it, but instead of calling it being corrupted by white man's operations, you say, well, Medicare was something we always had in the Indian tribes. Uh, Social Security we always had in the, in the Indian tribes and so forth. And you take these things and you, you stitch them. You reach far out for them in a sense. You stitch them into your own culture and you say, these were ours. And a white man uh, developed them in a different form. And we take them. And I think when you say that, and even before you get around to that, when you come down to welfare, that the white man uh, uh, took away our buffaloes, he corrupted our waters, he robbed us of our lands, and so forth. And uh, therefore, when, instead of our taking welfare from literally being beggars and saying, give us, support us, you know, uh, which is what, what the situation when you're on welfare, you, you construct a whole rationale about how since all this has happened, the white man now becomes like nature. What you're really saying, is, if, you, if you really want to talk straight on it, is he robbed us of this stuff, he was a bunch of bastards in doing it to us, and the least he owes us is welfare. And God damn it, we'll take as much of it as we can get. What is your particular role for a field of work? That's the first time I've been asked that question in Canada. <laughs> uh, going to communities, where uh, either economically or politically they've been disenfranchised, the poor organizing them for power so that they can get their legitimate rights, get their dignity, and get rid of a lot of rationalizations that they've used as a, an excuse not to get up and fight, pointing out that only that through their own efforts are they going to get things, that there's certain things like equality that no one can give or ever gives to anybody else on the basis of a, of a uh, non-existent altruism or as a charitable act. As a matter of fact, if I give you equality, 
you don't have it, you only have it by sufferance of the fact that I have given it to you, and if I'm strong enough to give it to you, I'm strong enough to take it away, till at some point if you don't behave yourself. You get equality when you have the strength to, to persuade <coughs> compellingly the uh, ruling powers that be that you, it's going to be costly not to get the equality. It'll be more costly to them than to withhold it than to agree to it. In that, in that situation, you get it. This has been uh, my function for 20, 25 years through the United States. It's very widely known. And uh, that's all. I'm up here. Film board's doing a movie on the work that we're doing in terms of its ideas, its record. And... Uh, they schedule this meeting here. So when you speak in those terms, it sounds uh, quite complicated. Uh, Nothing complicated about it. It's universal for everything from the Eskimos to the people living in, the, in Antarctica. No, are you speaking of uh, the basic needs of people as people or basic needs of the society? In the first place, I don't consider uh, myself or anybody else to be a spokesman for people in terms of their needs, what they want. They're the ones who decide what they want. In the case of our discussion, one of the things when I kept pushing you for something specific was to get rid of the Indian Act. This is, if this is so, and you find out if you're working <coughs> with a whole group of people, what you call a band here, this is what they want. Then on this particular thing, as a professional organizer, the first thing you say is, uh, if this is a number one issue, it's just assuming for the sake of discussion, that this is their decision. This is a number one issue. Well, obviously, this is a national act. Now, uh, therefore, if you start organizing, say, on the basis of an issue uh, in one, in a band of 300, 400 people on some, re some reserve on the issue of getting rid of the Indian Act, uh, this will, uh, <coughs> will not succeed at all because people uh, have the sense to know that three, 400 people do not have the power, do not have the, even the potential of getting a central government to change on this. It's could, a national Could fight. you even act uh, even before that? Like... Um, you would. Would, would it be essential, for example, to understand these people and why their situations are such, you know, why? Of course you have to understand them. You have to understand why their situation is such and uh, what their traditions are, what these values are that we've been talking about, etc. Mm -hmm. But I simply do not accept. I don't accept it not just on a part of the Canadian Indians. I don't accept it on a part of any people, any place in this world that uh, that uh, that they choose to be discriminated against, they choose to be uh, uh, literally charitable recipients, rejects, and so forth. Uh, w that this is what they choose. In other words, the pointed issue between us today was really more the developing of a rationale as a justification for it. Because, it's, because all human beings, you see, no matter what their position in life is, always rationalized. I think what you have is a people that really, it's more a case of their being defeated rather than holding on to these little values that become rationalities, rather, or rationalization. I think what, what I would suggest then is I can't believe that in large groups of people that everyone is that defeated. There's always somebody born here and there that has a little spark inside of himself in a fire. Find those individuals. Just fan the flames. Get them to be your little agitators. Get them to start organizing. And, and you may have to, I would say, from what little I know, and God, I know damn little at this point, but the older generation is absolutely hopeless in this picture. So I would work strictly with the kids and fan, agitate, get, uh, you know, get the fires burning and, and start getting little, uh, little torches here and here and here and here and here 
and then go with the action. In the past, and you know, we think in terms of not so much what we can we can take, but so much as what we can give. And uh, I think Indians can be organized around the amount that they can give to the white man, not so much around the amount that they can take from him. Because you know, 400 years has already proven that the Indian isn't so inclined to toward the white man's society. He hasn't come into it, and he, he refuses to. But to organize them around things that they can give the white man, and do you think yourself that... that uh, uh, what do you mean you're going to organize around things you can give? Well, what, what, right. what, what? We can give them a way of life that is better than the one we're they got not, already. We're not buying that. Forget that. That's being so idealistically unreal that you're out of the world on that. We, but I see the hippies are buying it, and I see a whole whole portion of the youth constituency that are buying it. I hear things now this around is, that are this, love and, and... This is a very minute segment of, uh, of I, the whole It's minute idea. now, but it's a start. It's like what you said about getting a little compromise. It's the start, and from that start, maybe something can happen. Look, <laughs> there are things you want that comes down very simply. Do you want them? If you want them, you have to go out and get them. If you want to go out and get them, there are, there are, there are only certain ways that you go out and get them. If you want to sit around and talk about love, and you want to talk about Christianity, and Christians were talking about love, you know, there were, there were hippies uh, back then, there were more than hippies. They walked into the Colosseum with the lions and the tigers and everything else and died for it, you know, for love. And Father, forgive them, etc. Uh, uh, if, if you want to do it that way, I mean, go ahead. As I told you before, this, uh, this is the kind of thing that the white society would love to see you do, because they know you're not going anywhere. And, and it means that uh, they can go on doing what they want without being concerned about making any changes. You don't, you don't They'd think love the, to see the, the all the Negroes in America living on their reserves. Well, you know, you seem like a man who who has no love or no none of these feelings or anything, isn't I have a hell of a lot more love than you have because I'm willing to go out and get corrupted for it. I'm willing to fight for it. I'm willing to stick my life on a line on it. And you're just willing to stick around and talk about love and hippies and not do a goddamn thing. Yeah, but that's not true, you see. The hell it isn't. We wouldn't be talking about it this way. <laughs> What do you know about values that we say that are Indian and those things that are entailed in this whole thing of things that belong to people, their, their own values, their own culture, and all those things that, that are built into the, their way of life, their environment, those things that they feel good about, they feel comfortable. All I know is what I heard at the luncheon table today, but let me say this to you. I will assume that you have a wonderful set of values to feel comfortable with. My ancestors had a set of values called the Ten Commandments, which they thought that they would feel comfortable with. Uh, but uh, in the world as it is, uh, uh, the rest of the people in the world uh, will only... Uh, let you have as much of your own values as you're strong enough to keep. And you can only get changes as you're strong enough to get them. And uh, as, you have the, uh, as you have the ability to act on it, it is impossible, believe me on this one thing, it is impossible to chart, regardless of what procedure you're using, to chart an orderly plan of organization in a very disorganized manner in the beginning. But uh, uh, actually, in, in the beginning, you use the, the opposition as your main organizer. You literally provoke them into actions against you that will irritate more people and get them uh, moving. I wouldn't bother to do anything. You know what I your just... young friend ought to do over there? He ought to organize the, all the Indian reserves into the hippie movement. Well, maybe that's what that all the Indian the reserves want, if they all want that, you know. The Indian hippies coming out of Canada, this may be the answer. Well, know? if that's what they want, it may very well be the answer. <laughs> as, as, I mean, following your own statement, huh? like these people sit down and they say, look, we all want to be hippies. You'll get the biggest tourist trade and that'll solve your economic problems. 
No, but I mean, look, you're 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 making fun of. I'm it, not making fun. I'm being dead serious. I'm telling yeah. you that if you turn, if you turn the Indian bands into big hippie uh, camp sort of, so when you have your powwows, there are big lovins and so forth. You will get uh, the American tourist trade with millions of dollars flowing right in the What if they don't want the million of dollars? I'll take it. <laughs> no, but see, here you are. You're not serious. You've got to start from where you are. This is the world you're living in. You can't just say, a world of self-interest, I don't want it. I want a world of altruism. A world in which the right things are practically always done for the wrong reasons, this is an immoral world. I don't want that. A world in which there is no such thing as the best, it's always the least worst. I don't want that kind of a world. You can go on and on. This has been the constant uh, business. You, but you, you've you got to start with the world as it is. You're, you're taking the position of that old story of, of the guy who's going through the country. He's driving an automobile and he stops and asks a native how to get someplace. So the native gives him a whole set of complicated instructions. I'm going this way, this way, this way. Finally, the native looks at him and says, but you know, Mr. If I were you, I wouldn't start from here. Go start from someplace else. When you say that there is a government over there and the only language they understand is the language of power, of boats, and so forth, and of a changing public climate, therefore, if I want to get rid of the Indian Act, I have got to mobilize enough opinion, enough political power, and enough su sympathetic supporting climate from other parts of Canadian society so that they take a look at it and then they go ahead and change their policy. But in order for me to do this, this means politicking out there, it means uh, lobbying, it means all these things which are so-called corruptive, as you put it, well, from you your see, point of view. Uh, on the, on uh, that, that's the way you're going to do it. What are you going to do? Wait for a divine revelation to hit them? Well, what would you do if you came here to an uh, Indian reserve, what would you do? I'd say to the people, this is the way it is. What if and they say no? You're going to shoot them? No, and if they say no, I'd say uh, this is your business. <coughs> and every people deserve what they want and what, they don't, uh, what, what they're not willing to stand up for. Well, when, you, when you're telling me that, that uh, you take on the... Uh, if, uh, if you want certain kinds of things, you have to take the corruption that goes along with it and all the killing processes and everything that go along with it. And what I'm saying is that uh, there must be a way that we can preserve uh, the things that we want. And if that means preserving our, our, uh, the, the spiritual nature of ourselves, that uh, how, how is it that we can't have that and have the other things also? I'm not saying you can't have some of those things. I don't think anybody ever gets seduced or doesn't want to be seduced to begin with. I don't think uh, there are certain, uh, uh, there are certain uh, moral values that you carry out from childhood, even uh, if you, uh, you're some religious ideas that you have out of your own background and, and a certain uh, identification with, a, with an eth ethnic group or with a racial group, whatever that may be. Uh, but uh, I'm saying that you cannot move into the world on some kind of a, of, of a purest thing that you're looking for because no such thing has ever been known to mankind. You think that automobiles, pool tables, it's a real symbol of corruption and stuff in white society. You think all this stuff around here is uh, that you're staying out of white society? You talk with me, which the establishment regards as one of the most corruptive individuals, and how you go about getting change, because they don't want change. The establishment would be well, all I'm not for on you. The side of the establishment, that's for sure. Aren't you? Certainly You're the not. goddamnedest best ally the establishment has when you take a position that you don't want to communicate with them in the only terms that they understand. They couldn't buy a better ally, you know? You want to sit here. Then yeah. you're condemning and, it and right you're there. you're making see? a judgment about that, too. I'm not making a judgment. I'm just walking away. Sure, I, I make a judgment about it. In term, in my well, personal well, judgment, everybody you're, makes... You're, you're going to make a personal judgment away. on me. Okay, granted, all this is beautiful. You know, I feel that way about what people need, what people want, and I say, well, let's see how we can achieve this, you know. No. Or, um, and then uh, they say, we don't feel we can achieve it this way. 
Could we look for other means? Well, you see, what I would be banging on them is, all right, let's look for other means. Let's look for other means. I'll tell you what I'll do with you. How long do you want to look? A week, two weeks? You want me to live here with you for two, a week or two weeks? And we'll talk every day on other means? Let's do that. But I'm telling you right now, at the end of two weeks, we're going to come out with no other means. Then what are you going to do? Then you're not sincerely trying to look for other means. Oh, shit. Because you have a pre-conclusion. Oh, I've got a, a, pre, a pre-conclusion on it. Uh, you know, that's crap. You're just making it No, it, it isn't work. crap. Oh, you said on. after two weeks well, we're going to come out with it. Look, I've been in it for 25 years. If there were any other means, I'd, I think I'd know them. What the hell do you think I'm going to do? Have a revelation in the next two weeks that's suddenly going to flash well, something? Well, why not? I don't know anybody. You know, I mean, why not? Just let's uh, ask why not. All right. I'll, I mean, those, these right, people, let, right, I mean, you're look. superior to these people you're going to talk to completely. For I, two I, weeks, I you're going to talk to them, but you know the conclusions you're going to arrive at. I'm sorry. These people don't mean a darn thing because you're going to tell them what it is. You say you're going to talk to you for two weeks, but I know how our conclusion is going to come out anyway. Look. You, th- this is the most semantical perversion I've had in a long time up here, and I've, I've, I've had a number of them, that, because you know what you're saying is not relevant to this at all. Let's put it in your terms, and I will sit with you for two weeks. We will try to find an alternative. What if we don't? What are you going to do then? I'll put it to you on that basis. And what what will you do then? <coughs> 